We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and our stop today is Sioux City, Iowa, as we get to visit with the head football coach for the Briarcliff Chargers, Coach Shane Ladegi, in his third season with the program. Coach, coming off a 1-10 in record in 2022, a tough GPAC schedule. It's always going to be a tough GPAC schedule. Let's talk about the spring then. What did things look like just a couple of months ago? Because we're already into summer right now. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a whirlwind. I thought I, I feel like I just got hired a couple months ago, but uh, really got into our finally third spring where I feel like the roster is starting to really shape the way we want. Um, I always tell people, you know, when we got here, we had about 40 guys on the roster. I was playing quarterback some days at, at practice and I'm not a quarterback by trade. Um, so we finally have we've had depth about everywhere. Um, really excited about our group coming back. We had excellent buy in. Coming off a one and ten season, made a little bit of some staff changes. Um, you know, we had a group that was was chomping at the bit to get going. I mean, we we worked out five days a week. Our guys came in Saturday mornings on their own um, and did stuff as a team. So I'm, I'm really excited about the culture we have. I'm really excited about the group we have coming back, and I'm really excited too about some of these new guys that we have coming in. We got quite a few here this summer already, and. Um, I think we're going to have some impact kids that can help us early on as well. Coach, it really is that way. I mean, third season, fourth season, the roster really does become something that that you've put your stamp on. And, and so I know that that goes a long way toward what you might feel about this coming year. Let's yeah. start with someone who is returning, as you have Luke Davies returning through for more than 2,300 yards last season and 18 touchdowns. Talk about him. Yeah, Luke's a uh, – man, he's got a big arm. He's really smart. You know, he got the first B in college. Uh, this past semester so he was sitting at a 4.0 forever and he finally got out of that unfortunately but um he's just excellent leader he was a captain as a true freshman um he's doing everything right he's continued to develop um he's really worked on becoming more mobile um and hopefully have an opportunity to maybe use him in the run game at times it's not going to be who he is but uh he put in a ton of work this off season um again his leadership his intangibles are off the charts um, we've had some good guys behind them chomping at the bit. You know, Johnny Bowser played as a true freshman for us last year, and Johnny's ultra athletic. He's more of our mobile kid, um, and it speaks to Luke's leadership and Johnny's leadership that they don't care. They just want to win, and if somebody else can go in and help us, they're going to do that. But uh, we got a bunch of weapons coming back too to surround Luke with, so I'm really excited about what we can do offensively moving forward. Whether he runs or, or stays in the pocket a little bit more, he's going to need protection. Talk about the offensive line then and who's coming back and, and who may fill some spots for you this year. Yeah, that's still probably a work in progress a little bit. I think that's always the group that takes the longest. Um, but we got Joseph Guterwa coming back. He'll be a junior um, at left tackle. He's been a staple since he was a true freshman. Um, excellent athlete, really smart, um, tough as nails. Really excited to see how he continues to develop. I think he's an all-conference caliber player. Um, Isaiah Williams will be back at guard. He's been another two-year starter for us, um, has done some really good things. Uh, Max Hayward will be our starting center. Um, and Eli, Eli Burns is another young kid that will come in and help us that played last year as a true freshman. So there's a lot of people coming back. It's just a really tough position to play when you're young, and, and those guys have had to do it. Um, and then we're going to kind of figure out who's going to be our right tackle. We've had a couple guys that have, have played, um, but we need to solidify that spot. Um, but we'll have some depth. I'm excited about some guys we've got coming in. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll spread it out. And we're going to try to get the ball out quick and, and stretch the field a little bit uh, from sideline to sidelines and ease a little bit of maybe some shortcomings that we may have up front um, this year. We're speaking with Shane Ledeggi here on Midwest Sportsnet as we preview the 23 college football season here on, on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. And I encourage you, please continue to watch these videos. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, I, I pick a side of the ball. You were talking about new faces, new players coming in. So uh, give us a preview, one side of the ball or the other, and then we'll talk defense in just a moment. But uh, let us know some new names. Yeah, I think uh, well, I'll start defensive line. Probably the kid that's impressed us the most. His name's Pierce Miller. He's a transfer from Shadron State. Uh, he's 6'3", 6'4", 275, 280 pounds. He'll play three technique. We struggled blocking him this spring. Um, he's he's athletic. He's twitchy. He's strong. He's gritty. He's everything you want in a, in a defensive lineman. Um, and that was somewhere we had to get better. You know, MJ was a really good – has been a good player even before I was here. Um, but you can't 
just have him. You know, we've we haven't been productive enough up front. So he's somebody I'm really excited about. Carlos Lopez is another interior D lineman that transferred in that did some really good things this spring. Um, then on the offensive side of the ball, we got a couple transfer receivers that are coming in from Minot State that I actually coached when I was there. Um, that uh, each got a couple years left. Corey Kerrigan and Kyle St. Pierre. Um, you know, Corey is electric as can be with the ball in his hands. His true freshman year, he made Sports Center against Duluth, had a 109 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Um, his first touch in college ever. Um, so, really excited to get him and our receiver crew. Um, and then Jaden Avery Stowers is another kid, a receiver that, that did some really good stuff this spring. A little, little, little smaller kid, but he's electric with the ball in his hands, another great leader. So excited about some of these guys we got coming in. Yeah, 109-yard kickoff return. That's a record that literally will never be broken. So, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. You alluded to MJ, MJ Montgomery, a senior on the defensive line, had 10 sacks for you last year. Talk about him and his play. Just a motor. I mean, it doesn't necessarily do anything just flashy, but man, the kid just plays hard, 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 hard. And he never takes a playoff. And he's just one of those kids that's got a nose for the football. And I just love how he plays. I love how he approaches everything every day. Uh, he's a wrestler too. So he's fluctuated weights. I mean, he's put his body through the ringer um, and to still come back every year. I mean, they had him wrestle 195 this year. Um, and to, to come back and, you know, be a 240 pound plus kid that can play on the edge. He's just, he's electric. He's tough to, he's tough to block. And again, his motor, I think is what separates him from everybody else. And now I'm hoping that we've got a couple more pieces around him and some of those younger guys that played that have developed, that's just going to make him even better. Coach, let me ask you this really quickly, since you're right there on the Iowa Nebraska line and wrestling is so big in that part of the country, when you're looking to recruit players and you see that they're wrestlers also, does that to raise a flag to say, hey, we want to look at this guy just a little bit more? Absolutely. I just think their toughness, work ethic, ability to bend, um, just ability to use their hands well, which is such a benefit to line of scrimmage players. And, you know, our guys that do both or have done both in high school have tend to be some of our best players. So we're, we definitely look for it. We get excited. I'm a basketball player by trade. Um, so getting in the gym and watching wrestling matches isn't necessarily, I don't always know what's going on, but um, we've definitely, in my whole career, had a lot of success with guys that wrestle as well. Coach Brett Tinker coming back as well, linebacker for you last season, led the team with more than 100 tackles. Yeah, just excellent player. He did all that well in only 10 games too. Led the G-Pack in tackles and another kid just tough as nails. Um, you'll walk in a room and you won't expect him to be that guy. You know, he's not real tall. Um, you know, he's not the fastest kid in the world, but just from leadership and tangible smarts, care factor. And I, again, I think probably one of the tougher kids in our league, just, you can't have enough of them. You know, I wish we had a whole roster full of Brett Tinkers, but um, I was excited that we get him back for a couple more years. Cause he's, he's just hitting kind of his, sweet spot in terms of what he's got left in the tank and what he can bring. So I think with what we're doing defensively now, he's going to have an opportunity to really even be even better. You also have a, a kicker coming back, Jonathan Branner coming back for you. Would you talk about your special teams just a little bit and, and what Chargers fans might see in that, that part of your game? Yeah. So I'm really a special teams guy by trade. So I, I love that, that third of the game. And, and Johnny has been just an excellent player. He comes from Germany. Um, he was on the team before I got here, and then he decided he was going to transfer um, kind of at the end of the season before I got here. And then kind of heard that things were going well and reached out to me and asked if he could come back. And I'm sure heck is glad that we did because um, he kicked a 56-yard field goal our first season. He's got a school record. He's got a huge leg. Works his tail off. I don't know if there's a harder worker on our team than him. And uh, great student. Just does everything right. He, he's – He's tough to handle sometimes because if it was his way, we'd kick field goals all practice and do nothing else. But you love it about him too, though. And he takes it seriously, and it's an important craft to him. And um, I'm excited we got him back for another year, and I, I expect him to do some really big things for us. Well, we're recording this as the month of July has started, but August is just right around the corner, and your season starts on August 26th as you go out of conference, 
to go to Waldorf to play there in state, out of conference, and then the GPAC schedule starts. Interesting thing, though, is that uh, it seems like it's going to be forever till you get to play back at home on the road at Mount Marty, September 2nd, on the road at Midland, September 19th. It's not until September 16th when you come back home and take on Hastings there. Again, tough GPAC schedule. I will say this, though, three straight games at home in the month of October, so you get your road legs early, though. Yeah, it, and side note, this is good because my wife and I are due in October, so we're lucky <laughs> that we have a home game when when the kiddo may come and be coming, so I could still hopefully make the game. But no, it's a uh, it's a good test early with all those games. Waldorf and us have been a good game the last couple of years, and and they've come up on the upper hand. Um, be really interested to see how they are and who they are. They've had some staff changes here that um, has got us wondering what we're going to see. Um, but uh, they got a lot of quality players and then just hitting the whole G pack schedule. It's a buzzsaw every week, but you know, the road games aren't as bad. I'm used to being up in Minot where every road trips nine plus hours. So get on the bus for an hour or so it really isn't too big of a deal for me. And you just have to go across town, you know, almost for just a couple of games there. Yep. So it's, it's not that bad. Uh, Coach Shane Ledeggi with Briar Cliff. The Chargers, again, 1-10 last season, looking to improve on that this year. And a lot to be excited about. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today to preview the season. We appreciate having you here on the channel. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I appreciate really all you do. I'm a small college guy at heart. I played D2. What you do to to showcase all of us, I think, is is awesome. And um, I really respect what you're doing. Thank you, sir.